Good evening, folks, and welcome to Son of Dell's Christmas Vlogmas Day 23. I told a little white lie yesterday. I said I was going to do it all in one day, but I'm not. I'm actually going to do a small vlog in the morning. It's not going to be a big vlog, not like me, 25, 30 minute jobs. It's only going to be five or ten minutes. Um, basically, just a, a nice, simple vlog anyway. There might be a lot of footage in it, though, because I've got some footage of Christmas, basically, to show you our preparation and things that have been happening in the last few days that we've compiled together to make a nice little video. So that'll be going up tomorrow morning. Coming up today, we've got the Harry Potter uh, advent calendar. And, um, yeah, I think we could figure out that it was going to be this person today. And the um, the Nightmare Before Christmas character, although it's a character we've had before, not like this. And, of course, we've got the Doggy Advent calendar. Also, Deb is very kindly and very, very well done, actually. She's taken photographs of all my coins from yesterday. And you can see them a lot clearer than I could make them yesterday. I couldn't make them very clear. Um, but I wanted to put them on so that people could see exactly what kind of value I got for the £20 I paid. So that's coming up as well. And also I'll be talking about my day. So uh, all that's come. First of all, of course, it's the advent calendars. Two left. Oh, it's time for a treat. Is it time for a treat? Uh, That's on camera. <laughs> Is it time for a treat? Is it time for a treat? Now that daddy, daddy's finished burping. Is it time for a treat? That was a dog. <laughs> I'm blaming the dog if it gets on camera. I'm blaming it was the dog. on camera. Oh, you just burped on camera. <gasps> 23. You threw your burps, didn't you, mate? Yeah. Oh, you've been spoiled this time. What's he? Another biggie. Yeah. Oh, turns it too small. Oh, it's a biggie. It's oh, a biggie. Oh, what's he got, Jess? What's he got? Yeah. Oh, so patient. Yeah. Jess, she's so patient. I know she is, yeah. I've got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I was boring you, Jess. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it your mum to give you. <gasps> oh, do I need Mum, what's this? Come here. I ain't got nothing else. What's this? Oh, what's she got? Sit. 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 Good girl. Count four. Good girl. Other one. Good girl. Good girl. And it's all over the floor. Okay. It is all over the floor. <laughs> No stone on turn. I've got no more. It's you can bad. have another treat off me in a bit. There you go. All done. All done. You can come lie down. And not sure. Was that a multiple choice one, mate? That one. Good girl. So it's door twenty-three of the uh, nightmare before Christmas. Oh, pocket pot calendar. Yesterday we had a sparkly zero, didn't we? Yeah. Let's see what we've got today. Oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, actually. It's a sparkly snowman jack. We've had snowman jack. Well, this one is actually sparkly and glittery. I don't know whether you'll be able to catch that, Dad. Can um, you see it sparkling and glittering? Yeah. Isn't that cool? I'm blind. <laughs> that is very, very cool, actually. That is a sparkly and glittery snowman jack. And that is indoor 23 of the Nightmare Before Christmas Pocket Pop calendar. So here we are, day 23 on the Harry Potter Funko Pop calendar. And after yesterday's cop out of putting another Ron Weasley in. Ah, 
Yep. I'll let you have a guess, Deb. Would we have any chance to be Hermione? Uh, yeah. It's Hermione in pink dress. But just stay there a minute. Hold on a minute. Tell me if you zoom in a minute. Zoom back in. Yeah, and stay there. Yeah. Look at the detail on the back of her hair. Ah, uh, she's got hair up, yeah. That's well cool, isn't it? So, Hermione, finally, is in door 23 of the Harry Potter Pocket Pop Calendar. Yeah, as we've had Hermione today, I think the last the last one really, because we've had Ron, then we had Hermione. I think the last one's got to be Harry Potter. He's probably going to be uncloaked or something. As we've already had him once, but I think we'll be having him again tomorrow. I think that's that's almost a, a foregone conclusion. I think. I don't know what's going to be a number twenty four on the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. It could be uh, Jack dressed as Santa. It could be Jack and Zero together. It could be Jack Zero and Sally together. I don't know what it's going to be. I haven't got a clue to be honest with you. I haven't got a clue. But, of course, today was another lovely sparkly one. I think I'm going to ace them all. There's two of them so far, which is Zero and, obviously, Jack as a snowman. I keep calling him Jack Man, but that sounds weird. Uh, sounds like some sort of musician. Um, yeah, so uh, coming up first, before I talk about my day, I just wanted to show you this video. And it's basically all the coins in more detail, so, so you can see exactly what I got for me £20. Just check this out and see what you think.
Well, my day today, to be honest with you, has been about sorting stuff out ready for Christmas. Because uh, bear in mind, it's what, there's only, what time are we on? We're on quarter to seven. So we're only just over 29 and a half hours. 29 hours just over before Christmas. You know what I mean? Before it's Christmas Day. And that's quite staggering when you think about it. And um, today, like I said, I got up, came downstairs. We did the uh, advent calendars quite early this morning. Did a little bit of footage. And that's when I decided I wouldn't go and do them all in one day. Because I like the surprise as much as everybody else. And if I did them all today, it'd be like a bit boring for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's vlog, like I say, it's going to be very, very simple. It's going to be the advent calendars, the last day. And also um, a bit of a... Fit, uh, compilation of all stuff that we put together behind the scenes at Christmas in the Skin Cotton household, really, our house here. Uh, we were dead chuffed today because um, one of the things we did order for somebody, we ordered, it, we ordered um, there's a lady just up the road from us called Betty, and bless her, she's 90. And uh, we wanted to buy her a nice uh, Christmas bouquet of flowers, and we ordered them off a place called Flying Flowers, which is brilliant. Anyway, they came yesterday, that was the thing I told you we were waiting for, and we wanted to make sure we caught her daughters visiting her or, or coming across for Christmas sort of thing to pick her up because we know she stays there at Christmas. And we wanted to make sure that we caught the daughters because we didn't want to just turn up on the doorstep with this box with flowers in and stuff and, and, and a planter. It's in a Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer planter, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and we wanted to make sure we caught them and we did this morning. Now, unfortunately, it was raining. Typical. Uh, so Deb actually went up. And just um, gave the box to them and everything and, and wish them a Merry Christmas and hope they have a fantastic time because the mum, uh, like I said, Betty, she's 90 and she's going to stay with the daughter uh, over Christmas, which is uh, really lovely when you're still doing that with your mum. Because I know of some people who basically, once the mum reaches about 65, they don't seem to want to know them. They only visit them about once every six months or a year, even if they only live five, ten minutes away, you know, they just don't visit them. And... Uh, I know as well as anybody that you don't take your mum for granted. You don't think she's always going to be there because, trust me, one minute you turn around and she's not and it comes as a massive shock to you and you'll be living with regrets then saying, oh, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done this. Wishes don't get you anywhere, mate. You need to do them now. I was so glad I managed to fulfil a lot of things to do with my mum. You know, we got her to come up to Blackpool. We got her to move up to Blackpool from Stoke-on-Trent and that was something we wanted to do because where she was living in Stoke-on-Trent was not a nice area. It wasn't a nice area at all. And we were all terribly worried about her and how she was coping on her own on the estate. Um, so we got her up to Blackpool and it was like a new lease of life for her. She was, honestly, she was like a, she was like a born again person. It was just unreal. She was really lively and sprightly and everything. And she was up and down town and everything and always ringing me and telling me about people that had parked in the street for God knows what reason. It was brilliant. It really was brilliant because we knew then she, she was safe and she was only within five minutes reach of any of us. You know, we could get up there literally within a taxi ride. Whereas, of course, when she was down in Stoke, that's 100 miles from where I live now. And that's a fair distance to go when you haven't got a car. Um, so, yeah, we were really, really pleased that we managed to, you know, do that with my mum. So whatever you do, don't take your mum for granted. Don't take your dad for granted. Don't take any of your family for granted because it only takes one twist of fate and suddenly you're staring at an empty chair. Um, and it's uh, it's not a nice feeling. It's not a nice feeling at all. So, yeah, so we managed to get them flowers for Betty. And then when Deb came back, we sort of went through a bit of the stuff, what we got to do um, in the next couple of days, mainly just sorting, like, you know, doing the table up and everything. Because the one thing we do, me and Deb, we always make an effort at Christmas. There might only be two of us, but we don't sit around like slobs on Christmas Day and, and have, like, takeaways and God knows what. We This table behind me, this one you can see here, this table... You won't recognise that because when that is fully decorated with the candles in the middle and the lovely tablecloth and the runner and the place settings and everything, it looks fit for a king, honestly. It looks amazing. Deb really pulls out the strings. Uh, my job on Christmas Day is very, very simple. I do a lot of the phoning round to people to thank them and to wish them all Merry Christmas. And I also am in charge of making sure that the wine is out the fridge a good half an hour, 40 minutes before we're due for the meal. So it's nice and chilled, ready for when we sit down for the meal. Because we do everything traditional, you see. We do all that traditional. Uh, we draw the line at the Queen's speech, though. We won't do the Queen's speech. We don't do the Queen's speech. We never have done. Excuse me a minute, will you? My throat's a bit sore. I think after 23 days of doing solid vlogs, I think yours would be as well. 
Uh, but yeah, I've really enjoyed doing my vlogs. I really have. Um, my viewing figures have gone through the roof because I've had over 1,000, 1,100 hours or something. Uh, sorry, uh, 1,100, I don't know what I'm talking about. 124 hours of viewing in the last 28 days. And that's pretty good going, that is, for me. You know, that's like three or four hours a day, sometimes even five hours a day. And uh, bear in mind, my vlog's only 30 minutes long. And if some people only watch 20, 25, 20 minutes of it or 10 minutes of it, you know, to make it up to them three hours, that's a fair few people that have been watching my vlog, and I'm dead pleased about that. Uh, also, it's given me something to do, you know, it's given me something to keep me amused, keep me entertained. I've been able to find information out, do quizzes for people, you know, give me top five lists of different things. And I've, I've tried to make it as entertaining as I can. Um, I'm not in a position to be able to do like walk around towns and things like that and, and, and adventurous stuff. But I do like to uh, make it more entertaining. Uh, yesterday's coins were an example, you know, a big example of that. But the rest of this evening now, I mean, we're only looking at 10 to 7. I'm hoping to finish my vlog, get it all done and dusted by about 8 o'clock. And if that's the case, then, you know, me and Deb can settle down and watch a little bit of TV. Uh, we've still got the last one or two episodes of Call the Midwife, the final season from this year, just gone, 2020. Um, March, I think it was, or summer it ended. And we've still got that to watch before we watch the Christmas special on Christmas Day, because Call the Midwife is one of our programmes. We love it. Um, I like it for the actual nostalgia. Uh, I think the nostalgia is brilliant. You know, seeing 1960s and uh, London and all that sort of thing and how things used to be. I'm quite into all that nostalgic stuff. So for me, it's, yeah, really enjoyable, you know. But other than that, like I say, not much planned tonight. We've just been sorting through some of the stuff, sweet and savouries, and dividing it so that we know, you know, where the sweet stuff is, where the savoury stuff is. Uh, my sister popped down not long ago because um, the one thing we have run out of is bread. Uh, she picked us some crackers up last week, Jacob's crackers, because we couldn't get as many as we wanted. We could only get one pack, and we needed them for last week and the week before. So now we've got crackers, we've got um, cracker bread, which I eat because uh, they're lighter than crackers and they're not as hard on my teeth. And of course, we've got some bread. And uh, my sister dropped that off not long ago. Now, Brad, uh, one of her sons, he's, it's his birthday on Christmas Eve. Uh, so it's a big happy birthday to him. And Deb always does him a homemade corned beef pie. And ever since he first tasted this homemade corned beef pie, he now looks forward to getting it on his birthday. It isn't a proper birthday if he doesn't get his corned beef pie. And even today, when they picked it up, the first thing he said was, I've been waiting for this all day, you know. So, you know, it, it's nice. It's nice to see. And Deb doesn't mind making him this corned beef pie, you know, because it's her birthday present. And it's also something that we know he likes. Um, and you can't go wrong if you can give your, you know, 20-odd-year-old nephew a flaming corned beef pie for his birthday and he's happy. You know you're doing something right. But we also, uh, Deb also bakes jam tarts um, and coconut tarts and uh, mince pies. She also does Florentines. She does um, a lovely mushroom quiche, which I showed pictures of a few weeks back on my vlog, which were absolutely, you know, it was absolutely inch perfect. There was nothing wrong with it. It was like something you get in one of these really posh restaurants. It was so tasty, and, and the, the people who taste it just absolutely love it because we gave a piece to next door, and they tried it, and it was absolute heaven. Uh, and last week... Um, she made a proper baked cheesecake for a change. Now, the first time she did it, she put chocolate in it, and it didn't come out right. It, there was something not quite right about this cheesecake. It was absolutely solid, and it also didn't have a very a very appealing taste, but she made a New York cheesecake, plain vanilla cheesecake, and I'll tell you something now. We gave a piece next door, and they actually turned around, and they just said it was heavenly. It literally was heavenly. You know, um, so it was nice to see you know, that, you know, she was back to doing the baking and everything. Um, she's doing some more tomorrow, coconut tarts and mince pies, so that we've got some. Because she does baking for everybody else and then kind of neglects herself because she likes a nice mince pie and a nice uh, coconut tart. So hopefully, you know, she'll get some done for herself. But, yeah, like I said, it, it's just gone quick, hasn't it, really? I mean, from the 1st of December, it doesn't feel like I've done 23 vlogs. It just doesn't. It just amazed me how, how fast time goes. And, of course, with everything that's been going on, you know, I think the start of December we were in Tier 2, and by the middle of December we were moved up to Tier 3. And uh, I've just heard today that we're staying in Tier 3. Uh, that's coming up for the final word.
So the final word today really is more about um, the restrictions which have been put in place and are going to continue to be put in place. Uh, obviously, I, I don't know whether you've been seeing the up-to-date news from the UK, if you're not from the UK, um, areas of southeast and South England and East England um, have all been put into uh, Tier 4 as of Boxing Day. And uh, we're still in Tier 3, so we are sort of like not doing too bad. But Tier 4 means you can't have anybody visiting you, whatever. Not even in your bubble. You can't have nobody. Not one person can you have in your house. You're not allowed to meet any other adult in your house except people who you live with. And... Um, I know a lot of people are bitching and moaning and stuff, but let's be honest, folks. If we'd have done as we were told in the first place, there'd have been no need for it. If we'd have adhered to the guidelines and, and done the social distancing and done the wearing masks and done the not going out and meeting people, we wouldn't have to worry about this. But because we're such selfish, arrogant people, which we are, um, we've just literally let it happen. And now we find ourselves in a 10 times worse position than we were before. Uh, and we've only got ourselves to blame. You know, we can blame as many people as you want. You can blame, oh, some people are saying, oh, you know, oh, it's China's fault because they want for China, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, it's America's fault. Oh, no, it's France's fault. Oh, no, it's Germany. No, it's not. Look at yourself, mate. Look at yourself and say, have I done everything I can to restrict COVID-19? And if you can hold your head up and say, yes, I have done, like I can do, I can do that. I can do that, mate. I have minimised my contact with people. I haven't been out the house except for my mum's funeral and, and the funeral preparations since March. That was the last time I went out properly for anything. Except in May, sorry, I do apologise. In May, me and Deb, before while we were in restrictions, we were allowed to go out for a bit of exercise and we actually walked the dog through the cemetery. Literally, we saw nobody in the entire... Can you believe that? On a live vlog... My friend from across the road. Um, I'll find out what she wants in a minute. Um, it's unusual for it to ring, actually. But, yeah, um, what I was saying before, yeah, we, we've got to look at ourselves. We've got to say to ourselves, look, we're responsible. We've created this mass. We can, only we can get out of it. Only we can get out of this mass. And if we don't do something soon, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And we're going to have something that, like the likes of which this world has never seen before. But, of course, we're too stubborn. We're too arrogant. We just want to go through life going, oh, hang on a minute now, I tell you what, I'm going to do exactly what I want because I'm a man or I'm strong or I'm not going to be told by the government. I'll tell you something, mate, this is nothing to do with the government. This is nothing to do with anything like that. This is to do whether you care about anybody but yourself. And if you care about people other than yourself, you will adhere to the guidelines. I mean, my sister still cannot believe the other day when she went in Hounds Hill Shopping Centre, which is our local small shopping centre, it was pandemonium. Pandemonium. The adults weren't sticking to the guidelines, which were on the floor, the walking guidelines. No chance. Kids were running around all over the place. Half the people had masks. Half of them didn't. Sometimes people were literally shoulder to shoulder. And then we turn around and blame the government for the restrictions. Are you serious? Are you really serious? And that's up north. Down south, it's even worse. You've got thousands and thousands of people cramming onto trains every single day, the underground and all that sort of thing. And then you turn around and blame the government because you've been put in tier four. Have I missed some tier? Have I missed some? Can't you actually accept responsibility for yourself? Can't you turn around and say, hang on a minute, it's our fault this is happening. We need to do something about it because I have. I've turned around, me and most of the people who I know, my family and I have turned around and said, we ain't doing anything to spread this, mate. We're not risking it. I mean, I've got nephews who work... Uh, at a factory and their you know their way of making sure that everything's okay is literally come in everything off in the in the washing machine hands done by the sterilizer all that sort of thing make sure that they have got a minimal chance of passing it on to anybody in the house or catching it themselves but of course up north we're thick aren't we you know we're thick up north we're the ones that the south don't even want to know exist except when there's a tier four lockdown, then all of a sudden areas up here like Blackpool and Lancashire and that suddenly become lovely places to come and stay. Oh, I'll go up and see my mate. I haven't seen him for ages. He lives in Blackpool. I'll stay with him for a month. Yeah, right. Whatever. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'm going to do another small vlog tomorrow. Uh, but you all take care. And remember, in the Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter Potter, like a dick about that. Never mind. In the Harry Potter calendar. 
today it was Hermione or Hermione, Hermione, however you pronounce it, Hermione, I always say. Um, and in the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, it was a very, very sparkly Jack Snowman. Who will we get on the 24th day? I've gone for Harry Potter, but I ain't got a clue what the Nightmare Before Christmas will be. Rack your brains, folks, and you'll find out tomorrow morning. Bye for now.